Question is from Colin Self. As a trainer, what should you consider before leaving a big box gym to become an independent trainer? Oh, good. What a, what a, I love this question. I know. I love this question. Yeah, managing too. gyms, it was like I, I would get trainers who, it was always trainers. Nobody else really did this in the gym, but they would get to a certain point with clients or they get a certain level of comfort and then they'd be like, they'd, they'd start doing mm. the math. Yeah, like, I could make so yeah. much more money. Like, let's see, the gym it charges eighty dollars a session. I'm getting paid thirty dollars a session, yeah. and then they do the math. I do thirty sessions a week. Oh my gosh, I could be making this much money. Doesn't work that way. Here's what I would always tell them: If you're not crushing it in your gym, if you're not like the best person in there, bringing in the most sales yep. with the most clients, the odds that you'll success on your own Very are slim. like yeah, like less than five percent. Very slow. Like you're, you're not going to succeed. If you can't make it in a big box gym. That's the proving grounds. Oh, dude. I mean, you have everything, every resource accessible there at the big box gym. I mean, you have all the forms. You have all the potential clients, like, literally walking through the front door. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, how much more do you need uh, to have a successful business if you're really motivated enough to to, to produce? And so, again, like, uh, to, to Sal's point, you do really have to prove yourself. You have to be, uh, you know, one of the top ones in there that everybody knows it. Like you're, you're very comfortable knowing. And I mean, even when I was like in that environment, I remember like consulting with Adam quite a bit, like, it, you know, what, what should I look out for? Like, who's really killing it out there in the independent training world? Like all these things, like, where am I actually going to market myself? Like, what are the, the, the venues for that? Like what kind of things, like there's so many things to really consider, uh, you know, even a presence online these days is humongous like a social media presence needs to be established like people need to be able to find you so um i mean it's it seems daunting it's not impossible like it especially if you are you know very good at if you're very organized if, if you can really like you know manage yourself like that that's something that i always you know probably manage myself better than anybody else uh so it was a good fit for me but it's definitely on that level where, um, you know, really consider where you are and your status right now in your gym. Well, you were one of the top trainers at uh, one of the biggest big box companies in the world. You were one of the top trainers at 24 Hour Fitness. You left and you did well. I would say successful independent trainers make up the top 1% of successful trainers. That's mm -hmm. it. I mean, after that, if you're not blowing it out mm -hmm. at your big box gym, you're, you're going to crash and burn out in the open world. Well, this is kind of uh, business 101. Uh, when you work for a big box gym, uh, they are providing the leads and opportunities for you, uh, which is the single uh, most challenging part about scaling any business. No matter what we are talking about, if you are trying to scale and build a business, you need leads and opportunities. And a company like 24-Hour 24, 24 Fitness pays millions of dollars monthly to drive leads through the, through the door, which you get the opportunity as a trainer in a big box gym to see if you can close and present and sell them on the idea that you're a good trainer. And that, if you can't prove to be the best at that when somebody is taking care of the most difficult part about building and scaling a business then you, you are really setting yourself up for failure to go out and try and figure that piece out without the assistance of millions of dollars being advertised and funded to give you those leads and opportunities. I remember when um, I was really upset that the company uh, put a ceiling on my, my overrides. This was about like the eighth year that I was in the company and when I really became checked out that I was no longer gonna work for them. And uh, for me, I had got used to a you know six-figure lifestyle, and they basically put a ceiling on how much money I could make, and it, that really pissed me off. And back then, you you were not allowed to moonlight, right? As a trainer, you couldn't go train somewhere else or run a boot camp uh, while also working there. And I chose to do it. And when I did it, though, um, because I was thinking, okay, this could be my transition to moving out from twenty-four hour fitness. Uh, I made a point to build my boot camp business without using a single client yeah. that came from the gym. You had to prove to yourself, and, and and it was exactly it wasn't about making money for me. It was about proving to myself: can I generate enough traffic to come to this boot camp class that I'm not, and where I'm not relying on this lead generating machine that I'm currently working in. 
And if I can't do that, I better just fucking shut up and, and take take the nonsense that I don't like that this company's laying out here for a new comp plan because I'm not good enough to go out there and do that. So it was very important to me that I could do that. I used to give the same advice to any trainers that are looking to transition from a big box to private is just because you build up your clientele at a big box doesn't mean you're necessarily ready to go private. Like I would make a, a point to start to try and build a private business that is not sucking from the current one that you've been handed to from this, this big box that's providing all the leads and see how difficult that is and learn to overcome that, i.e. what Justin was saying through marketing yourself, through online, social media, find ways to build your business, not relying on those, on any clients that you've received from that big box. Take the training wheels off. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. if you can prove to yourself that you can do that, then you'll probably be a trainer that will be have success when you go independent. The, the biggest challenge I used to have with the trainers that worked for me in the big boxes was how to get clients off the floor, how to get new clients off the floor. Now we're talking about a 35,000 square foot gym with hundreds of workouts every single day. The vast majority of these people didn't have a trainer. They're already in the gym mm -hmm. and they're already they're working. the warmest leads you could oh get. Oh my God, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. get any more of that, yeah, right? They're, they're already interested in what Shooting you have fish to sell. They're already interested in what you have to sell. They're working out. Yeah. They're already working out. They're in your house. You just go, okay, go talk to someone and get a client. They'd be like, oh, I can't do that. I don't know what to ask them. What am I going to do? And, uh, they're going to say no. Now, now imagine trying to do that at the grocery store. Yeah. Or at Starbucks. That's what happens when you're independent, you by the way. You gotta do all that. When you're independent, you don't got a big old gym with lots of people working out that you can go talk to. You go outside in the real world. Oh, These I'm are people- going to golf courses. I'm going to you know clinics, oh, anything. Dude, it's hard. So if you're not crushing it, like in a- This is what I, I, I tell you what. I got to the point working in big box gyms managing these gyms before I went off and opened my own studio, I knew this was my thing. I would go into a gym and I would bet trainers and I'd tell them, I need you to go talk to people on the floor. Oh, I can't do it. I'd say, I bet you in the next 30 minutes, I can get someone to purchase 10 sessions off the floor. I would do this to trainers all the time just to show them that it was possible. And I was so confident that I could go do it. It was easy in a gym. When I went on my own, those skills came very much in handy, but it was way more difficult. I would have to go inside grocery stores, set up outside the Whole Foods, go to the coffee shop, talk to business owners. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're going out and you're talking to people. If that makes you feel uncomfortable, <laughs> you're fucked. Yeah. You're totally, totally screwed. Yeah. Now, if you're in a big box and you're murdering it, you're crushing, and the, and the part that you're crushing the most at is at getting new clients. That's what you're really, really good at. Your odds are higher, but they're still not super great. I'm just being very honest. Oh, yeah. Being an independent trainer is very difficult. Now, if There's you no do, easy way into it. No. Now, if you do it and you do it well, of course, it's extremely rewarding. Yep. If you love fitness and you love helping people, uh, you can make your own, you know, at some point you make your own schedule once you start to build a reputation, which takes years, by the way. Mm -hmm. As an independent trainer, it takes years for referrals to start coming in and for you to, be, to have this reputation. But if you do that then it is very uh, rewarding, but it's definitely uh, nowhere near easy. I would say it's one of the more difficult things to do.